Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week number three of the ICBA and first and foremost, I'm really sorry for getting this out as late as I did. I'm going to be getting this one out on Monday and then week four on Tuesday and we should be all caught up from there. But my apologies once again. But here we are up against Austin and the Lawrence Town Flames, I believe. Garchomp the God. He is currently 2 0 in our division, I believe. And we are 0 2 after taking over that 0 1 team and losing to Ultra Player. So we're in a really interesting spot. I really do like our team matchup in general. I'm not too, too sure um, what to expect from how he plays. I've never played him before, I've never seen him play or anything like that. I'm just meeting him now through this league. And here, and here you can take a look at this matchup. He will have the Mega Venusaur, the uh, Quagsire, which really does wall a lot of my team. The Halucha Lele combo, which is really, really scary. Of course, Victini is really dangerous on its own. And a Raikou, which I haven't faced in a while, but uh, I feel like this is going to be a pretty decently fun match. In any case... I do want to get into it soon, but really quickly, just uh, a Scarfed Infernape. I felt like Scarf Infernape would uh, do the most to his team. A Golbat, which I think is really fun. I think, but I believe that this is a max defense Mega Gardevoir that uh, is really meant to hopefully take a hit from the Halucha and hit it back with the Hyper Voice in... Uh, specifically if it tries to set up a sub or anything like that. A Dragon Tailing Blastoise, which I am a big, big fan of. I believe it's just Max Defense uh, Assault Vest, which is one of my favorite sets. With the Dragon Tail can just uh, phase out anything that wants to set up in its face. Um, I really do love that set. And then just a Pivoting Electros and a Greninja that is an absolute monster all the time but with that i'm just going to get into the match if i'm not mistaken i really struggled with my lead and if i remember correctly i did lead off with a scarfed infernape i really did not know what to expect i figured worst case scenario scarf you turn as much as i don't want to reveal scarf this early um it really did feel like it was going to be the play for the longer run but uh, he ends up leading off with a Raikou, which put me in a really interesting spot. So I ran a bunch of calcs in this situation. Uh, from what I could tell, I could take a Volt Switch, fine. I could, I could even take a Thunderbolt, which um, really freed me up. I just felt like I wanted to get a huge, huge hit off. I wanted to set the tone for the match early. And I just get off a big uh, Flare Blitz. I knew it wasn't going to KO, but uh, this would be a really difficult thing to break through just in the longer run of the game. So getting some early big damage on it was going to help me out a lot for the future, I thought. And then he has a pretty obvious switch into the Quagsire. Now that I reveal that I'm Scarfed, I can't grass knot this thing or anything like that. But I take whatever it wants to go for uh, by going into uh, my Golbat. And I expected him to go for a Scald and to be able to take the uh, Scald fine. But he ends up toxicing, gives me the free turn. He reveals Rocket Helmet as I go for the Super Fang because uh, I'm like, this is going to be another Mon that's going to be really difficult for me to break through uh, throughout the span of the match. But then I'm able to go for the Giga Drain, um, which was a crit. Now, I did get a set after the match, and hopefully I remember to put both of our set, uh, complete teams in the description this week. But uh, I, that crit did not matter at all. I believe I did like minimum 53-ish percent, something like that. But I was able to get that uh, wall out of the way super early, and Golbat just came in like a monster. Like That Super Fang into Giga Drain, I could not have scripted that better. That was absolutely amazing and then uh in comes Tabu Lele I felt like um giving up the goal bat was more valuable than trying to aggressively pivot and get damage and let him get damage off on something else so I stay in I actually take the Thunderbolt which was pretty wild and then I'm able to U-turn out I go into my Scarfed Inferno which I've already revealed a Scarfed and uh this will let me get off a very free U-turn so I'm making the correct predictions early on in this game, at least. Hopefully, we can um, make this work for us. But I do go into Electros, and I really did, honest to God, I really did want to click U-turn on this thing, but I wanted to hit what was in front of me. I went for the knockoff, even though he had the very obvious switch into Mega Venusaur. It was a very unfortunate play on my part, but uh, I got a little bit too excited. I wanted to knock off what was in front of me, and being able to knock off the Big Teeny was... I felt like it was going to be huge for me, and uh, very, very unfortunately, he ends up just taking the easy switch into Venusaur, and I'm forced to U-turn on the next play, but it is a slow U-turn, so nothing, so nobody else is going to be, is going to have to take this Sludge Bomb, and I do get poisoned, which is unfortunate, but it's okay, it's okay. Uh, Electros is a huge, huge pivot for me, and I love it as that, so it's going to ultimately be fine. Now, I can go into my Mega Gardevoir, and... Uh, 
even though I'm weak to the sludge bomb, he gave me terrain to openly Psy Shock. However, I do go for Hyper Voice. I don't quite remember why. Um, yeah, I don't quite remember why, but uh, I did end up going for the Hyper Voice regardless. I probably should have just gone for Psy Shock. I'm not too, too sure. And why did that? I mean, maybe it was for the Victini, but it resists either way. I don't know. And uh, Psy Shock would have been um, terrain boosted regardless. I went for the Hyper Voice. Um, and the terrain goes away. So now, uh, this thing comes in, and I don't want anybody to really take this hit, but at the same time, Golbat here, I, I can freely give up Golbat here, because um, it's not gonna be able to roost up on anything. I'm, I don't really see it doing anything, except um, taking some hits here and there, and uh, just as fodder, it's perfectly good here. But uh, he goes for V Create, which is super interesting because it drops its speed. And even if it's Scarfed, which I, I came into this kind of assuming that, that it was Scarfed, and I know Scarf 15 is as popular as it is, but n knowing that it dropped its speed, that allows me to freely go into Micro Ninja. And I didn't expect that Victini to stay in at all, regardless of whether it was Scarfed. So I went for the Gunk Shot because Gunk Shot hits his team for at least neutral damage and I can follow it up whatever comes in and hit it hard, especially now knowing that the Bikini is scarfed, he would have had to run double scarfers in order to uh, take this out comfortably. But I make an accidental prediction. I mean, it, it was somewhat of a prediction, just knowing that something was at the, was gonna have to come in and uh, take a Greninja hit. But I go for the Gunk Shot, which Okos the Tapu Lele on entry. And here, he brings in the Halucha, gets the Unburdened boost, and what I really didn't want to do was give him the f was give him free reign to be able to set up a sub. So I knew I had to stay in. Um, my only reason for staying in was the fact that he could freely sub up on me, and that would have been real. Bad. That would have been real bad. So that was my only reasoning for staying in. If I had to give up the um, Greninja just to be able to um, break the sub and. Uh, that allow in my my Blastoise to phase it out with Dragon Tail, I would have been fine with that. But uh, he stays in and lets me, lets me take it out on the Source Dance, and I'm able to freely bring in my Blastoise again. Max Defense Assault Vest. He's not gonna be able to touch this thing, and uh, I knew that he had to switch into Venusaur here, so I actually make a double switch here, and uh, I believe I just go into yeah, I go back into Greninja because Extra Sensory is now absolutely free. I could, again, predict him to go back into Victini, resist the hit, or something like that, but he ends up staying in. Um, and I'm able to just take this thing out with that extra sensory, just straight Oko in terrain, which is wild. He gave me that terrain, and uh, somehow it just ended up working for me in that situation. But now he's absolutely free to go back into this Victini, and... I didn't quite know what to do. I was going to let my Greninja go down, so I go for the Water Shuriken. I thought maybe it would go for um, V Creed again, and I would be able to resist it if I um, out prioritize it and go for the Water Shuriken, but he reads that and goes for the uh, Dang Fusion Bolt. But we take it. I honestly have no idea how we took it. This is a Max Attack Victini with Fusion Bolt, and uh, we just ate up a very super effective Fusion Bolt as a Water Type Greninja. I don't quite know how that happened, but on the next turn, we are able to get three hits off with the Water Shuriken, which does win us the game. Greninja copping, I think, four KOs in that match. It was absolutely wild. I love using Greninja so, so much. But uh, can we just talk about how Golbat came through? It was a complete team effort because Golbat came through um, 1v1 that Quagsire so, so well. Uh, I brought the Giga Train obviously specifically for the Quagsire, but I didn't really have much else to be able to deal with it. And uh, wearing it down, down over time would have been a struggle for me with the Recover, but somehow we did it. We managed to get through it, and that just opened up the door wide open for Greninja in the longer run. And uh, everybody just helping out. That Infernape with that huge, huge hit off on that Raikou was so 
huge. And uh, everybody just being able to pivot, you turn out, everybody hit the field, everybody did something, and uh, it was a huge, huge team ever. I love the way that my team worked in this situation, and that will move us to one and two. We do get our first win of the season, and hopefully we can just keep it up. Uh, it's going to be a really tough matchup. I believe next week is the Birmingham Bullpixes, who are winless, I believe. And they will be coming going into the match 0-3, and, and uh, I do want to win there. I absolutely want to win there, but uh, for right now, this has been a whole lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back again really, really soon. Like I said, and then week four of the ICBA will be going up tomorrow, and then uh, I'm going to catch up on MPL. I will upload uh, MPL against Sebi. I, I, I'll probably just do that on Thursday and then do um, week six on Friday, and then from there, more UBL um more icba uh for the coming weekend but that'll be it for me thank you guys once again so much for watching and once again out